welcome back to no arrow on the second lecture series of communication and navigation in this lecture we will talk about how radio waves propagate through any medium and we will also learn about different paths of propagation so without wasting any time let us start our discussion as discussed in the previous lecture radio waves of different frequencies have unique characteristics as they propagate through the atmosphere they have different wavelengths too radio propagation is the behavior of radio waves as they travel or are propagated from one point to another into various parts of the atmosphere radio propagation will depend on many factors and the choice of radio frequency will determine many aspects of radio propagation for the radio communication system to understand the propagation let us first discuss the properties of radio waves the most important property are as follows radio waves cannot be felt or touched and they are invisible radio waves can travel long distances at the speed of light and can penetrate through different materials radio waves experience reflection refraction absorption diffraction and polarization and lastly Radio waves are emitted naturally by lighting and astronomical objects that have a changing magnetic field and varying electric currents. Now radio system mainly use three different techniques to communicate: the line of sight propagation, ground wave propagation, and sky wave propagation. The earth and the ionosphere act as a wave guide for electromagnetic wave propagation in extremely low frequency and very low frequency bands. So let us discuss the different propagation methods. in line of sight communication the wave travels a minimum distance of sight which means it travels to a distance up to which a naked eye can see then we need to employ an amplifier come transmitter here to amplify the signal and transmit it again this transmission is used for infrared or microwave transmission on the surface of earth line of sight propagation is limited by the visual horizon to about 40 miles ground wave propagation of the wave follows the contour of the earth the wave sometimes bends due to the earth's magnetic field and gets reflected in the receiver such a wave can be termed as reflected wave the wave then propagates through the earth's atmosphere is known as a direct wave the direct wave and reflected wave together contribute to the signal at the receiver station when the wave finally reaches the receiver the lags are cancelled out in addition the signal is filtered to avoid distortion and amplified for clear output sky wave propagation is preferred when the wave has to travel a longer distance here the wave is projected into the sky and it is again reflected back to the earth the waves which are transmitted from the transmitter antenna are reflected from the ionosphere it consists of several layers of charged particles ranging in altitude from 30 to 250 miles above the surface of the earth The ionosphere is the ionized layer around the earth's atmosphere which is suitable for sky wave propagation. The ionosphere extends from 60 km to 500 km and due to such heights the strength of solar radiation and gaseous atoms are widely dispersed into ions. It is these ions that help in the propagation of radio waves over a long distance. It is the practical function of these ions which influences radio propagation to distant places on the earth. ionization is not linear with altitude but the ionized particle form into discrete layers at night the f layer is the only layer of significant ionization present while the ionization in the e and d layers is extremely low during the day d and e layer become much more heavily ionized as does the f layer which develops an additional weaker region of ionization known as f1 the f2 layer persists by day and night and is the main region responsible for refraction and reflection of radio waves so based on the frequency dependence of radio bands the extremely low frequency super low frequency ultra low frequency and very low frequency bands are guided between the earth and the d layer of the atmosphere the low frequency and medium frequency bands are used as ground waves hf band is guided up to e and f layers for propagation whereas vhf uhf SHF and EHF bands are used for line of sight communications. So I hope that you understood the basics of wave theory and radio propagation very clearly. If you have any doubts feel free to ask in the comment section. I thank you all for watching this video. 
so subscribe to our youtube channel follow us on social media and if you find this video informative do hit the like button and share it with your friends see you all in the next upcoming lecture